Raita, why don't you tell us who we've got on first? Ooh, okay. So as the creator of Ruby, he needs little to no introduction at all. Uh, he's been working on Ruby for more than 25 years, but even the creator of Ruby sometimes fights with technology a bit. You'll, you'll find out later because he sent us his, he sent us his recorded talk and he had a bit of challenges with that. Um, but uh, after his stream, uh, we will open our Q and A session with him. So please uh, answer. Uh, please uh, ask your questions in our chat. I can I don't never. I never know where the the chat. Uh, please like answer your. <laughs> uh, ask your questions there, and uh, uh, we'll make sure that we'll ask them uh, to Matt when he joins us. Um, he's going to show us not just what's coming with the release of Ruby three but we, he will also tell us a bit about the future of Ruby. So Max, take it away. Hi, uh, this is Matt, uh, the creator of the Ruby language. So that, uh, yeah, to tell the truth, I just failed, uh, failed the record the previous trial so that I'm I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh thank you for having me to the new no Noru no uh Ruby conference. Uh due to the the coronavirus outbreak so that we cannot gather together in in any country so that many conferences are cancelled. But uh Thank you for the technology so that we can uh, share our ideas and, and the plans to to the community through the internet. So that today I'm going to talk about uh, the Ruby 3 and then beyond. So the last four or five years I have been talking about uh, the the future Ruby 3 for a long, long time. Uh, so that maybe you are sick of hearing about the Ruby 3 from me. So that I started explained about the Ruby 3 in the past Ruby Rocco, Ruby Conf, and Ruby Kaigi. But uh, but this year, this year, this is real. Uh, it will be available on December 25th, 2020, as we planned. So that if, if everything okay, unless we, something very, very bad happens, so that we will, we will release the Ruby 3 on December this year. So that in the past, I told you about the Ruby 3 will be available on the, the year of Tokyo Olympic. But uh, due to the coronavirus, so the, the Tokyo Olympic was postponed to the next year. So that, yeah, some people in the core, core community so talk, discuss about the, the, okay, shall we postpone the, the release of the Ruby 3 to the next year? because the Tokyo Olympic was postponed. But it, after the, some discussions, we decided to release uh, Ruby 3 on December this year because we need to move forward. So that it's, as an open source community, we have to move forward. We have to keep moving. So that's why we work on Ruby 3, so that that's why we are working so hard. The open source community in general cannot stop, stop evolving, otherwise it will die. So you know, everyone likes new things, so that as a programmer, as an engineer, so that I like new things. So that I'm a, I also a, a language geek, so I like to study about the new programming language. So the new programming language like Elixir, Rust, Go, or 
whatever. So that there are many, many new programming languages out there. So that they are very exciting. It's they are very exciting to for new ideas, new technologies. So yeah, it's it's kind of joy to learn new things. But the, you know the Ruby is kind of old. The, it it was released on ninety five to the to the internet, so that it is twenty five years old. If uh, the birth of the language was defined by the the first release date, but at the at the same time, no one was paying. So that we have so many web applications out there. So that if we progress we change the new we change the ruby for new ideas new technologies at the, but uh, you have to upgrade your application very heavily so that that's pain so that no one wants pain in that sense ruby should be stable it's kind of a contradiction right so that the language design the language plan are very hard to up the, overcome this kind of contradiction. So that, that kind of contradiction is from our heart. So that, that's contradiction in our heart, human mind. So that in a, our, we are not, we are more mere mortal. So we made mistakes so that we language designers want to fix the mistakes in the past. So the in the history of programming language, many programming languages are made uh, the changes, incompatible changes to fix the past mistakes. For example, the Ruby 1.9 made a huge gap from Ruby 1.8 to uh, to fix the past mistakes, and then uh, yeah, similar things happen to Python two and Python three, and uh, the PHP community uh, try to uh, overcome the drawbacks we had they had in uh, PHP five, and then uh, the ECMAScript four as well. Uh, they try to change the mistakes in fix the mistakes in uh, ECMAScript 3 or prior. But uh, in fact, no one wants pain, so the compatibility matters. So that when we made big change, big, big compatibility gap, so that we had some you know, tragic situation. For example, Ruby 1.8, the some people stayed using Ruby 1.8. So that for Ruby community to migra migrate to to Ruby 1.9 or later, it we took five years, more than five years to to move on to Ruby 2.0 or the newer Ruby. The Python 3 was even worse. So that this year, year 2020, the day declare the end of life of Python 2 officially. So the the Py whole Python community forced to move on to Py newer Python Python 3. But they took 15 years to move on. Yeah, PHP 6 was even cancelled. They just gave up to make a big, big change before the release so that they start PHP 7 from PHP 5. The ECMAScript 4 also cancelled. So the uh, you know the language design reflects human mind so that if we don't make change so that 
people are bored. You know, people just leave from the community. They stop. They are, they stop using Ruby just because of they're boring. But uh, if they feel too much pain in using it and the migrating newer version, so that they just leave for the next project. Okay. Okay, uh, we suffered in the past Ruby changes, so that we the, maybe we our next project will be written in say Rust, <laughs> Go, or whatever. Yep. So the yeah, so the, we don't know about the human mind, so that it's di pretty difficult to to you know predict. So that design. Just as I said, design language is hard, but uh, we need to move forward anyway to create a future. So the Ruby 3 is the future we have to, we have to make, we have to cheer up the community. So the basic principle of Ruby 3 is we should keep compatibility. But we can make it great and we will make it great by making Ruby faster and then uh, making Ruby programmer more productive. Okay, uh, the three, ma three major goals of Ruby 3 will be being fast, being concurrent, being correct. The faster Ruby can be achieved by many things. You know, the GC improvement is one of them. And the JIT is the major major part of improving performance. JIT stands for Just-in-Time Compiler. It dynamically generates native code. So the, our JIT compiler named MJIT. By using MJIT, Ruby runs three times faster in some benchmarks. But unfortunately, not in Rails applications yet. Actually, we are improving. The, when the MJIT was first came in in to four, Ruby two four, the Rails application runs far slower using JIT. But uh, now, uh, using Ruby two seven, Rails application runs as fast as without JIT. So we are improving. Uh, concurrency is the another uh, goal of the Ruby three. So. In the past, you know, for example, uh, when I was working on the, the first version of Ruby in 27 years ago, the one computer has only one CPU. But, but nowadays, the, even the smartphones have eight cores or so many cores so that using those many cores are very critical for making performance. So using more core to run fast. We are achieving this by twofold. One is the async IO fiber, the other is Raptor. Async IO fi fiber is, uh, is a kind of fiber to, to uh, mul multiply uh, I/O access, so to improve the I/O bottlenecks. So the some other language use the async and await, uh, but uh, we we use fibers. For example, Node.js. The at the beginning, in Node.js, every I/O comes with the callbacks, and then that result in the callback hell. Then they introduce the promises. So the, uh, the callback hell became uh, the promise chain. Then uh, in XMAScript 7, I think, <laughs> uh, they introduced the async and await so that uh, we can write down the, the sequential way as long as uh, at the same time we multiply the the IO, IO access. So Ruby 3 will come with the async IO fiber 
So the since we use fibers, we don't add any new keywords like async and await. Uh, just those I operation in those fibers, IO fibers, so the switch context. So that, uh, you know, async, async IO fiber does not utilize the multi cores, but uh, uh, utilize the, the blocking time to process other things, like just just like a Node.js. So that uh, we, since the context switches between fibers as uh, fast, so that we can uh, improve the performance. Uh, the Ruby application server named Falcon is based on the similar technology, and uh, it's it's brilliantly fast. So that uh, we expect. Uh, the performance improvement using async IO fiber. Actually, the the a, a guy who created the Falcon uh, in is in charge of the developing the async IO fiber right now. The Samuel Williams. Uh, the second one is Raptor. Uh, Raptor is not Reactor, but. Uh, it's it stands for the Ruby actor. The reactor is for the CPU intensive task, so to improve the, the CPU bottlenecks. It's kind of similar to web workers, so that they have the isolated object spaces for each reactor. So that they react between reactors, they communicate via channels. Then they don't share the the state so that they I mean the immutable state so the the sharing between reactors data sharing between reactors are very limited so the three kind of things three kind of objects can be shared between reactors the one is the immutable object numbers symbols frozen strings or something like that so the uh, frozen object that's does not refer another object is an uh, immutable object. Okay, the second for second class, second kind of the, the shareable objects are deeply frozen objects. A deeply frozen object means the the object which is frozen and then the objects refers from that object is also frozen recursively. So those objects are deeply frozen object. Then the third kind is class and modules. As you know, uh, the, in Ruby, the classes and modules are mutable so that we can change the classes or modules using open class. But the, the accessing classes and modules from the raptors is uh, exclusively uh, protected by uh, the internal mutex so that you don't have to worry about the, the changes okay the, the the classes and modules are very special well so the we don't have the global interpreter lock in any long anymore so that each reactor has uh, each reactor has uh, inter global lock i mean the lock so that you know in, in theory i we don't rec recommend that but in theory the you can run the multiple threads in the in the raptor so that uh the threads within the raptor is mutually uh exclusive using the lock the raptor lock but uh we don't have the global interpreter lock so that each raptor can run in parallel using multi-core. So that means that we can isolate the work in, into the, the reactor so that we can use the multi-core that can run parallel. So the, the third goal of the Ruby 3 is the more correct Ruby. The we checks error earlier. So the to achieve that 
So we introduced static, the kind of static type checks. The RBS stands for the Ruby signature, and the type profiler, which generates the RBS, and the static type checker for Ruby. It's a third party. The RBS is kind of like a D.TS of TypeScript. So the yeah, this is the the RBS example. Uh, the class foo has two methods, foo and two s. The foo methods does not return anything. The two s it returns strings, and it takes no ver no argument or argument uh, integer argument. Okay, this is kind of similar to Ruby, but the uh, spec uh, specially designed to describe the, the type. So the Ruby 3 ships with the RBS for the core libraries, like uh, the array strings, arrays, hashes, or many things. So the, we can use those type information in the RBS file so to check for the type checker or better ID, maybe ID has the better code completion or type signature pop-up, so that we can uh, improve the tools by using RBS information, RBS type information. Then we have the tools named the type profiler. The type profiler does the, some kind of naive type checks, then generate the type uh, RBS, type information in RBS for your application. Uh, by using the technology named abstract interpretation. Yeah, for example, uh, this is the very silly example of the Ruby Ruby programs. The class foo, method foo, and then generate the, the foo instance, and then call the method foo. The, by using the abstract interpretation, so that we statically follows the execution path, so that foo method, a uh, foo class, the calls new method to generate the instance of foo class, then call the method foo with argument 15. That means uh, the foo method, argument A of foo method is bound to the 15, which is integer, so that we can tell A is integer. Then A is integer. Integer has plus method, with uh, that takes the another number. So the two A plus two is okay. We the A has plus method, and the plus method takes the number argument. Then those are the plus method returns integer. Then the foo method returns B, which is integer. That means the uh, foo, foo method returns integer. So the, the type profiler generates the, this RBS for your application. The, there is foo class, the, which has the foo method that takes integer and returns integer. Yeah, that's it. And uh, if you have some kind of the, the type mismatch in your application so that you the type profiler cannot find the correct method in your application and then then type profiler can warn you okay I see some kind of the type type mismatch in your application maybe you have bugs or something so uh, this is what type static type checks in Ruby does. Uh, actually, the, using those RBS information and the, the some kind of the the additional type information in the comment, so the uh, type static type checker like a Sobe or Steep uh, can check your application more extensively and they find more bugs and. Uh, more more advice to improve. Okay, the Ruby type check basic is fundamentally we don't pursue completeness nor soundness of the uh, type systems because of the you know 
the Ruby is Ruby. Ruby is basically dynamically typed, so that there is very uh, less type static information of types. So that that means that we we have some kind of the even we have the some kind of the gradual types, so that we cannot we cannot do any sound type checks. So that we just just give up. So that if you find more errors than you know than today, I think it's okay. So that we are not going to add the type declaration in the syntax. Then uh, we provide the uh, RBS file, the separated file, or maybe in the yard comment, and then, but not in the language syntax. Uh, maybe you complain about the you know the sep the information separation. Maybe you fix the code. You have to update the, the type information so that you know. So you have to maintain two files instead of one. But uh, I think the future editors or IDEs will help you to update the, the type information in the separated file. At the, Organ uh, organically, so that you don't have to worry about the, se the code, the file separation in the future. Then the, we are making the, these stickers even more smarter in the future. In addition, in Ruby 3, we are making Ruby even better by adding some new syntaxes. Uh, for example, param matching, the R assignment, or number of block parameters. Param matching is added in 2.7, like this, so that you don't have to, you know, the, deconstruct the, the arrays and the hashes. Instead of the, you can write the patterns, like, a, okay, you have the record named Alice, which has the, the children named Bob and then retrieve the age of the Bob's age then print it or otherwise print we don't have Aris, no Aris. Yeah. The pattern matching is comes very you know usable in functional programming way so that it's it's quite handy or convenient. Okay, our assignment is the right hand side assignment. So the we chain methods in Ruby a lot. In, the, in this example, we have the sequence of the one through from one hundred, then map, sort, reverse, and then take first five. So the this kind of sequence is now really rare in the Ruby programming. But uh, in writing this sequence, we Right, we our mind goes through the uh, left to right, top to bottom. That goes like this. <laughs> but uh, if I need need to assign the result in a variable, we have to move on to the top, then write down the the name of the variable and the equal sign, and that. It's kind of the you know unnatural way of the moving of the eyeballs and the, the cursors in all the editors. So instead, we if we can write the right hand assignment, so that yeah we have the sequence we mat sort reverse take five then assign to the variable. Okay, that's natural. So the in in the law. After the long sequence, these are assignments pretty handy. And then we don't recommend it everywhere so that you don't have to replace the every assignment in right hand side assignment. But uh, in some cases, this is very convenient. Okay, number of the block parameter is like this so that you don't have to worry about the, the naming the, the temporary local block, block parameters. Kind. Well, and beyond. 
So the, we are going to release the Ruby 3.0 this December. And then we have to, what about the life after Ruby 3.0? 3, 3 the, I don't think we are going to make any big syntax change in after Ruby 3.0. Because stability matters, so that you know, we are not going to make any big incompatible changes. But uh, we are we are thinking about the working on and improving supporting tools after Ruby three zero. We have Solagraph for the the language server protocol. We have Solbed for static type checking, or we have Steeps as well. We have Rubacop for the code linter. And then those tools are proved. The better tools enable a better user experience. So that we have to keep moving. We need, I think we need more tools and then we need to improve those tools. So that we, ha we should have better type checkers and uh, maybe we are going to have the, the, the Ruby formatters or that we have to improve the language server protocol tools or maybe performance tuning tools or debugging tools, those tools. The, we have those tools already, but uh, we have to improve those things. In addition, we are making Ruby even faster by adding for example, by adding better jet, so that, uh, the for example the Java Virtual Machine in Chrome and on and and the Firefox has multi-layer jet, so that they have the, the you know the the virtual machine which is the basic fundamentally an interpreter, they have the they have the lightweight uh, jet compiler which does not do any optimization then they have the the heavier garbage uh, the JIT compiler which does the more wide wider optimization so that uh, for most of the cases lightweight JIT is good enough the uh, the compiles very very fast and efficient but uh, uh, for methods which is very called very very frequently so that there is the room for the more heavier uh, more difficult optimization the so they have multi-layer jet so that our M jet is kind of the heavyweight jet so that maybe we can add the lightweight jet between the M jet and the the virtual machine. The we have the several candidates. So the Mail is one of them. With the Mail is written by the Vlad, Vladimir Makarov, who, who originally written, who has originally written the M Jet, and then, or maybe the Dinasen, uh, which is is the Lua Jet backend. So that we are going to improve the many things, especially the supporting tools and the performance that we will work on the life in life after Ruby 1.0. One more idea. This is just just a crazy idea, but uh, uh, I'm thinking about the smaller subset of Ruby, which is simpler and then more strict, and then the hopefully faster or easier to optimize which is downward compatible which is the subset of ruby can run in the, the existing current ruby but uh, not all programs run in smaller ruby so that any smaller ruby program can run on traditional ruby it is now but not in reverse and then Smaller Ruby can rust, run, run faster, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, it's just an idea. I don't, I don't know yet. 
so that we you know we have to uh, keep compatibility so that the we existing Ruby program should run but uh, uh, if we stay in the, this kind of the subset of Ruby for example uh, you cannot modify the, the string object or maybe you cannot uh, you cannot override the, the you know the o integer operator or something like that that this kind of the kind of inflexible but the much easier to to optimize so it's just an idea but uh, we have i have those many those crazy ideas and then we try and we experiment those things one by one to make ruby great Anyway, we will keep moving forward to, but with keeping uh, compatibility and uh, making you excited even in the future. Because we want to make a world better. And uh, I want you to join our effort to make the world better. Because uh, programming is fun, programming can change the world, and the Ruby can help you uh, become productive uh, programmer. And uh, with the tools like Ruby, and you can change the world better. And that's all for today. Thank you. <laughs>
so the you know for example the the library like active record generate process runtime but uh, usually your application has the uh, uh, static class system for, for that application so that you you can prepare the your RDS type description for your application. Awesome, thanks. Um, Tiago is wondering uh, if a method returned more than one variable with different types, which one should would the checker assume? Always the first one. Uh, actually, in that case, is that is that should be the union type. So the one method returns as, uh, for example, integer at the first first line in the some condition, then the same method returns array in the other condition. The RBS should be the union of integer or array. So the, no the next question, so people are very curious, so am I. Can we now clear up for once and for all, please, in your slides, who is the turtle and who is the bunny? <laughs> uh, turtle is the timer. So that the my Tino is supposed to be in 30 minutes. So that how much time I consume. The turtle represents how much time I consume. The, the rabbit is the index of the page. So that if the rabbit is slower than turtle, so that I have to more pages to consume in the Fantastic. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it goes back. Um, so um, one final question. question. Yeah. Go ahead, Raita. I just wanted to quote all the amazing responses we had in the chat. Like, uh, um, thanks for everything. My life would be different without your work. Uh, thank you. So many thank yous. We got so many thank yous, uh, uh, Matt, for you in the chat. You 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 have changed uh, you have changed many lives. Yeah, actually, the community changed my life too. Oh, thank you. So um, I think we are at the end of our Q and A uh, session. Uh, thank you again very much uh, for joining us. Yep. And thank you, uh, oh, thank you. amazing. So. Well, folks, we're going to take a short break now. Uh, we'll see you back in five minutes for Penelope's talk. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>